Hey YouTube, welcome back to Expedition Tennessee. Today we are at, well, it's Fort Loudoun Historical State Park, and we are here for a reenactment of the Indian, the French and Indian War. So with that being said, guys, let's go. Guys, here's where we're at. I'll hold it there so you can read it. And we're gonna walk back here and look at the fort. It's a uh, the original fort that they built, and uh, it was built in 1756. So we're gonna head up here and check it out. And of course, I got my grandbabies with me. You know, they're always with us. They're my best friends. And when we come out here to see them reenact the French Indian War that took place here. And this is in Monroe County, Tennessee. So we're headed up through here. There's the Fort Loudoun Visitor Center right there. All right, guys. One of the first things you see, we got blueberry bushes planted. But old battle lines right there keep horses and them from charging there's the old red coats they're down there in the fort yeah I see them down there formed You can start to see the fort right there, guys. And this is actually what the fort and everything looked like during the 1756. See where they had firing windows in the line? Look at that. Now we're entering into the fort here in a second. This is called the Sally Port. Wow, look at that cannon up there on the... Oh no, there's two of them. Stop this one up here. Oh. Here's the cots that they would sleep in. What is that? Over there, fire? Yeah. The thing. Um, the old jugs over there. Where's the thing at? At the fire. This is where they... Where's the thing at? This was like the medical. Fire. What the fireplace? Yeah. It's right there, baby. This was like the doctor. You see those bone saws and everything they would use, like the bullet retractor right there, pull out somebody. Old candle. <laughs> That's pretty nifty, man. Got crutch. Look at that door lock. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm not playing. They had an upstairs too, a loft area. I say it's where they put the kids. 
if there was any there. You make the kindling? Uh, yeah, pretty much what I'm doing is I'm just preheating the uh, the bake oven. Uh -huh. uh, it takes anywhere from four to eight hours uh, to really do it, so it's an all day process. Oh. Uh, you start out with a small fire, uh, and then you once you, and you feed it throughout the day, and then you add some bigger logs to it and let it burn down. And within four to eight hours, usually you can uh, start having some really good hot coals. And you just put them in a circle or a square pattern, and then you wave you're going to cook. You put it in the middle, and hopefully it's nice and hot by the time you're ready to eat dinner. <laughs> oh, okay. That's pretty neat. Get out of here and let you talk to some more people. Wow. Yeah, baby. Look, straw beds. And uh, FDR. And straw beds. Wow, guys. This is really something. Of course, there's another one up there with a bed. Stayed there. Somebody painted a mural on the wall in the 17th, maybe the early 1800s. And the James gang stayed there, and they shot holes in the walls. Oh. And there's still bullet holes in the walls. Well, they're not around anymore. <laughs> but thank you. How are y'all doing? All right. Doing pretty good. Now, what kind of cabin would this be? This would have been a barracks for some of the soldiers. For the soldiers, okay. Wow. And then we'll walk through here. I can't see. I can. He's pulling bellows. I want to see. Y'all welcome to come up and, and get closer if you want. If you have any questions, you might need to yell at me or holler or something. This floor behind me is called the bellows. It's up in the air, it's what he's pumping. What it's doing? It's putting air, oxygen. You, are, you can demonstrate this, won't you? You've been here long enough. And what it's doing, that bellows, when it goes up like this, if you come a little closer, you can see it. <clears throat> See it moving, going up and down, like this? It's up in the ceiling right there. When it opens up, that's like your mouth doing this. And when it closes, that's like your mouth doing this. It's blowing the air out through that pipe into the fire. And that's what gets the fire hot enough to make the steel hot. Yeah, Same thing to do at Dollywood, baby. Except that's the old time forges. I was just wanting to get a. I guess you can. I was wanting to get a shot of this cannon. Y'all be careful. Just stand up there and look out and then come back down. I don't trust these things. 
My poor son's got duty with the baby. He looks very enthused, doesn't he? This is the original old well. What is this? This is a well. Now it's filled in and it's got a pump. Pigtail, tobacco, cheese, candles, no, tea. Tea? Tea. No, it's probably water and no, just different, like alcohol or something like that. Mustard, black pepper, brown sugar, soap, leaf tobacco. It's pretty cool. Look at these old kegs. Pretty neat. Oh, it's an old cart. Excuse us. Them old muskets. Full uniform. Let's see what the guys are doing. So you would normally carry a canteen haversack, and then the other one was on the back because let's face it, you're going to go through a quart of water before the day is over. So you'd have a secondary quart in the middle of your back, so you're wearing one. one kit on your back and then one kit on your left side. Uh, your right side is your cartridge pouch and in a lot of cases you had a belly box in the front that had your tools and stuff for your weapon and five ready rounds of ammunition so that if you got zapped real quick and the Indians came out of nowhere you could quick load five rounds of ammunition and return fire till you could get a unit all back together. So, so you form up. And it, you it, exactly. So yeah. it, it, you had a reaction period. But you're also, when you're moving in a group, even though you're marching out and your guns are probably, probably not loaded, you're going to have sentries fore and aft, before the, the column and after the column, that are going to be with loaded muskets, basically making sure that the column is not hit from any sides. Yeah, when I was Marine Infantry, we would call that security. Basically. Yeah, same thing. Cool. Okay. The GR is George Rex. Uh, is it world marking? Yes. And you would have later seen that on the backpacks and on the haversacks. But when they first came out here, basically they were issued them as soon as they were getting put together. So some of them were marked and some of them weren't. Again, we talked about uniforms outside. Uh, uh, our lieutenant was, was talking about this would be the you know, how skylots. Well, if, they were, if the uniforms were being made in four or five different towns, when everybody get together, nobody matched. Because everybody, uh, uh, like yeah. I laughingly said to the to the so they need a horse from there, that. Well, this is they mad red. Of course, from your farm because uh, and, well, is it English, is it you know, but color? the English are like my farm. You know, the English, you know, it, it it's my family, my farm. That doesn't mean it's all identically the same. You can get mad red from other dialects. So you know, we have different, you know, different understandings in that space. Mine is actually. Yeah, so you had things like that, mm -hmm. and it just snow kept snowballing. So what I really did was, so, I teed up for the very first of all. Oh, so you're, you sound like you're No, I can put on or take off the accent as, as needed. <laughs> I'm at, uh, if I was used to use my actual accent, you'll hear uh, Pennsylvania, but you also hear Florida. It's 35 years old.
Oh wow! But I did that. I did the uh, the British reenactment in Castillo de San Marcos. So I did the, the British reenactment in Castillo de San Marcos. So oh yeah. For about ten years, I played an Irishman. So it, I can put the brogue on just about as easy as I can take it off, and I can stay in it for. Once you fall into an Irishman, it's hard to crawl your way back. <laughs> That's what girls say, you know. <laughs> uh, I've heard that joke before. Uh, but anyway. Oh, I'm there's... sorry. I, I appreciate the explanation of the animals coming in my life. It was interesting. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Take care and enjoy your stay at the yes, board. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I told you I'd be here. Well, I'm glad to see you. Yeah. So, did, were you here for the cannon firing? No, we just got here. We've, I got all the babies and everything with me. So. The next, the next time I think we're going to shoot the main gun will be for the night. Night visual. Okay. Yeah, that will probably. That's well, probably nice. a good thing because I got my little four month old out there. Oh that wow, we got. yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's loud. Because so we'll, what we were doing this afternoon, we had both guns on this bastion right. ready, plus the wall gun. Oh, okay. And then we, one, two, three, and then we reloaded and fired everything at once. Oh wow. Yeah, it was loud. Now and we heard something up there in the parking lot. It was just boom. Now that was that was a uh, actually uh, a demonstration for muskets, and we fired uh, two volleys off, and then there was a couple of single shots fired. Oh uh, okay. Ma'am, I'll let you talk to you. Uh, okay. Any questions you can? Any any questions? Is it sleeping on straw? Uh, yes. You all be careful going out. Uh, and changed out and changed out fairly regularly. Give y'all a look at these little cannons. These are the ones I fired earlier. Yeah. The other one is a other one Old powder keg right there. Boy, it's really nifty. This sport is really neat. And they were telling me this is the way they would actually have looked when they rebuilt them. Uh, the Fireplaces are original, a lot of the foundations original, and they just repaired it over the years, is what the gentleman told me. And, but as you can see, it's, this was the first fort for the English across the Appalachian Mountains. They marched from North Carolina to here and set up a, this fort they marched 450 miles in 45 days. It took them 45 days to get here. That was roughly 10 miles per day. And when they got here, this is what they built. There's another Sally Port over there. It lets you go out toward the river. The uniforms are neat. They're trying to bring those little things home. I don't know what they're called, but they're trying to bring them home. Alrighty. Well, guys, I think I think that's about it for this one. I've showed you just about everything. There he is. Cece, what is so important? <laughs> She is so worried about y'all bringing something to the car. What are you bringing? It's in the car. Those are little seeds. The roly polies. Oh, the roly polies? Yeah. Yeah, well, you put them back where you got them. Grandbabies are catching bugs. See those locust hedges? They put them all around the fort as a barrier 
to keep the Indians out. And you can see right here the thorns that they have on them. So. It's beautiful out here. I just couldn't imagine what it would be like back then. All right, guys, I'm going to close this one out. I want to say bye to you all from Fort Loudon. And I hope y'all enjoyed this one. And, guys, you all have a good one. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Hey, guys, appreciate y'all watching. If you like our content, hit the like button. And while you're there, slide on over and hit that subscribe button. It only helps our channel grow. So, let's go.